Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the CVCS Chapel's podcast feed. Today, we're bringing you the elementary chapel from last week, September 27th. Most of the school was gone on retreat, so we didn't have the opportunity to post it last week, but we're making up for that now. This message is brought to us by Pastor Seth Ebel. He is the pastor of discipleship at the Shoreline Church in San Clemente, California, and his message is called God Honors Our Faith. As always, we hope you enjoy the message today, and thank you again for listening. Stand up and give him a warm Eagles welcome. Let's please welcome Seth Ebel. Thank you. All right, you guys can have a seat. Good morning. Man, I'm with Joey. I am 100% with Joey, who is leading us in worship that for us as daddies, my kids are a little bit older, but my daughter went to CBCS last year. She was a seventh grader, and we love CBCS. But hearing you guys sing is really super duper special. And isn't it awesome to think about, you guys, that God is so, so good. He's so good. Isn't that awesome? Like, as good as you can imagine anyone being in your life, God is even better than that. Isn't that crazy? That's exciting. That gets me really excited. Well, great to be with you guys. My name, as Brittany said, is Seth, Pastor Seth, and I serve at a church in St. Clemente called, does anybody know? The shoreline, that means you go to the shoreline, and you go to the shoreline, and you go to the shoreline. Some of you are involved at the shoreline, which is super duper cool, and some of you are a part of a lot of other awesome churches, and I am just so privileged to get to come and to share God's word with you guys this morning. It is truly so special for me to get to do that, and today, we're going to be looking at a very famous story from the Old Testament. If you remember last week, Dusty Davis was here. Dusty's my good buddy, and Dusty was here, and does anybody remember what Dusty was talking about last week? Anyone? What about you? Legos. That's what stuck, huh? He was talking about Legos. He absolutely was. What about you? How God made the earth. He made everything that we see. And then he kind of went into this, uh, th- this talk about choice, right? Hands down. He talked about choice. And he talked about the fact that Adam and Eve had a choice, didn't they, in the garden. They could believe God who said, I've made all this stuff for you. The only thing is you can't eat from this one tree. Or they had the choice to believe God lies, didn't they? They had the choice to believe the serpent who came along and said, no, you're not going to die. You're not going to die if you eat of this fruit of this tree. And what was the decision that they made? Sadly, they ate the fruit, didn't they? They ate the fruit. And so here's where we are in the story. This is really cool because you guys are going through chronologically the story of the Bible this year in chapel. And so what happened after they ate the tree, we read in Genesis chapter 4, there was a brother, uh, two brothers, Cain and Abel, and Cain ended up killing his brother. Isn't that horrible? That his anger was so strong, and it was the first ever um, story of someone killing another person in the Bible. Well, we keep reading. What happened is things, things began to get worse and worse and worse until a man comes along, and God says, he's looking out at the earth, and he's saying, man, things have gotten so bad, I think I almost need to start over. And do you guys remember who we're talking about, what the story is with that? Who remembers? Oh, I just heard Noah. That's right. Okay, quick question. Bible students, I want to see how well you know your Bibles, okay? How many animals did Moses bring onto the ark? How many? How many animals did Moses bring, you guys? Yell it out. No. Oh, he just nailed it. Say it again. Nice and loud. Um, not Moses. Um, Noah. Not Moses, but no, it was a trick question, wasn't it? So you can go and give that one to your parents when you get home. You can say, do you guys remember how many animals Moses brought onto the ark? And they'll be like, two. And you'll say, wrong. And it will be a great moment, okay? Because you'll get to tell your parents that it was actually Noah. Okay, hands down. So the story we're looking at is all about Noah. Now here's the situation. We're going to put this verse up on the screen for those of you who are awesome readers. 
Look at what it says. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil, so the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on earth. Look at what the next uh, line says. It broke his heart. It broke his heart, right? And so, what we need to remember, because sometimes we think about this story of Noah, and it's just, it's kind of crazy, right? That God, who loved the world, who created this beautiful world, he gets to this point where he goes, man, things are so, so bad. Have you guys ever seen, like, one of those Marvel superhero movies? And sometimes in Gotham City, things are so black and dark and scary and bad. That's almost like what I picture the world was like, right? That things had gotten so bad that God comes and he says, I need to, I need to start over. But how exactly is he going to do this? Well, he identifies a man, and we're going to talk about it in a second, but he identifies a man named, not Moses, but Noah. He, he identifies Noah and he says, my rescue mission for planet earth is going to start with this guy. And what's crazy is, you guys, he tells Noah to build this giant ark or boat, but the thing is, at this time, I don't know if you guys ever thought about this, it had never rained before. On planet Earth, it had never rained. There was sort of this canopy that enveloped the Earth at that time, and we're told that things were always sort of uh, watered and uh, kept alive and, and growing because of uh, springs that came up from out of the ground and kind of a mist. So it was always kind of this foggy mist. Have you ever been to the beach when it's a little bit foggy, right? That was the entire earth at the time. And so God says, guess what, Noah? I keep wanting to say Moses. I'm tricking myself with my own joke. But anyway, he tells, he tells Noah, he says, it's going to start to rain. So guess what? You better get busy building a boat. Do people make fun of him for this? Big time. They're like, what are you doing? We're in the middle of dry land. Why would you ever build a boat? And so they make fun of him. They ridicule him for years. He's doing this thing, and um, people can't understand why. Now, a couple of lessons. We're going to put these on the screen that Noah teaches us in this. Number one, when God speaks, should we listen? Absolutely. When God speaks, we should listen. Jesus in the New Testament comes along and he says, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments, right? It's not enough to just hear our mom and dad say, you know what? You need to clean up after yourself. You need to pick up your room. You need to take your cereal bowl to the kitchen, right? It's not enough just to hear that and go, that's a great idea, mom and dad. I really agree with that. We have to actually do it, don't we? And so, the, the lesson is when we, when we hear God say something, and sometimes, you guys, it's a little prompting in our heart. Sometimes it's just a, this very subtle little thing where we go, oh, I need to be nice to that boy or that girl who's kind of difficult to be nice to. Or I need to, I need to listen to my mom or dad the first time they tell me to go do something, right? And so we need to, we need to train ourselves to say, God, if you're speaking to me, I want to listen and I want to obey right away. The second thing we learn from Noah is that we should never live for the approval of others. What does it mean to live for the approval of another person? Does anybody know? You in the back, right there. Yeah, say it nice and loud. What? You have no idea. It's fun to raise our hands though, right? Even if we don't know, it's just like everybody loves it. Okay, so here's the thing. To live for the approval of another, of another person means that you really just want other people to be happy. You want to appear really cool. You want to make sure that everybody thinks you're awesome. And you never want to get into any arguments or anything like that because you really care about what people think, right? But God instructs us through this story that that should never be our motivation. Guess what? We can live every day, you guys, when you wake up in the morning, you can say, God, I'm living this day for an audience of one. That means that you're the only one at the end of the day who really cares about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So Noah teaches us that very clearly. Now look at this. We're going to put this verse up on the screen. So the world was very evil. The world was very wicked. But Genesis chapter 6, verse 8, but Noah found favor with 
the Lord. Now, here's the crazy thing, and here's what I'm going to kind of close in talking to you guys about. That word favor actually means, it's, it's the Hebrew word that means grace. So if I am to give someone grace, it means I'm giving them something that they don't deserve. Like, let's say you were really mean to me, and you were calling me names, and you treated me super badly, and I gave you a present in exchange for that. Well, that would be kind of crazy, right? And yet, that's what the Bible says God does for us. That's what grace is. Grace is getting good things that we do not deserve, but God decides to give them to us anyway. And that's the word that we find here. So Noah, it's not that Noah was this amazing guy. And I think sometimes we're tempted to think, well, Noah must have been just really great and awesome. And that's why God spared his life and God spared his family family's life. You know that what we read in the Bible is actually after they they land after 40 days and 40 nights and the earth dries out after several months and all of those things. Noah gets out of the boat. He plants a vineyard. He grows some wine and one night he has a little too much wine. And then he gets what's called drunk. Isn't that crazy? And so He's just this guy who isn't making great decisions necessarily, but God chooses him and says, I'm going to have a grace upon this guy, and through him, I'm going to repopulate the earth. We'll close with this. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. So the New Testament talks about Noah, gives us Noah as an example that we should follow. It says this, it was by, who knows what that word is? Faith. That's right. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened before. The world had never gone through a huge flood like that, right? That It had never rained before, and yet Noah believed. And then we read, by his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. Here's the big idea, you guys. God loves to honor your faith your trust in him. Even when we don't see what's going to happen, even when we're a little bit confused about what's going to happen or we're going through something challenging or difficult or hard in our lives, God comes along and he says, I want to reward you. I want to bless you, but you have to trust me. And there's going to be so many times, you guys, in your lives, eyes up here, there's going to be so many times in your lives where you're going to need to trust Jesus even when things feel out of control, even when you can't possibly understand what God is doing. We can trust him because we know that he's trustworthy. Just like the song that Joey led us in this morning, the goodness of God, we come back to that over and over and over. So when we're having a bad day, can we trust Jesus? When we're having a good day, can we trust Jesus? Can we trust Jesus each and every day? Absolutely. Let's, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you so much. For the story of Noah, thank you for choosing um, to love your people, that you would start over, um, that you would um, display for us an example of faith and obedience, even in the midst of a world that was so evil and wicked. And oftentimes, God, we find ourselves in that same place, that the world around us feels like it gets darker in some ways. But Lord, your light in our lives gets brighter. Would we live today by faith? Would we trust you even when we can't see? In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. Thanks for having me, you guys. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 through school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.